Uh, we now start uh, the fourth session uh, of the course. The first issue is that you have seen the uh, sound patterns of the five vowels A, E, I, O and U and now see these words or rather these pairs of words R A T rat, R A T e, rat, can cane, dam dame, mad maid, pal pale, car care, bar bear, mar mare, similarly make, share, met, meet, her, here, seen, similarly sphere, fin but fine, sit but sight, rip but ripe, bid but bide. F I R fur, but F I R E fire. S I R sir, but S I R E sire. Similarly, line, wire. D O T dot, D O T E dot. H O P hop, H O P E hope. Similarly, home, more. Cut, but cute. Hug, but huge. Tub, tube. Cur, cure. Mule, tune. Okay. So, you note that because of this E at the end, the sound of the earlier vowel changes. Okay. So, the sound of A changes here, sound of E changes, sound of I changes, sound of O also changes, sound of U also changes. So, all the vowel sounds undergo a change because of the effect of this E, which is not showing its own pronunciation in the word. For example, D O T E, it is not dot A. Okay. So, according to box, D O T is dot, according to bed, T E N is ten. So, it, but in this word, it is not dot A, but it is dot. Okay. So, you can see the pattern in which you have in the beginning a one constant or some more constants may be there here. Okay. For example, those T H O S E T H or it can be blank. For example, age before A there is no consonant. So, one or more consonants or no consonant and then a single vowel A E I O U whatever and then again one or more consonants and then finally an E. Because of this E the sound of this vowel changes. If you uh, try, you can find a lot of examples of this happening among the words that you already know. Try to compile a list of your own in which this is happening. Okay. And at this point, we take a little break from words and go into sentences, the rules of syntax of English sentences. The simplest, the simplest kinds of sentences in English are of this kind. Go. This is perhaps the smallest possible English sentence. Just one word with just two letters. Okay. You can expand that. Go to the playground. Maidan mein jao. Okay. Go to the playground in the evening. Sham ko maidan mein jao. Go to the playground in the evening to play football. Sham ko football khelne ke liye maidan mein jao. Go to the playground in the evening to play football with your friends. Sham ko dosto ke saath football khelne ke liye maidan mein jao. Okay. So, but all of these sentences have a simple pattern. Okay. Take another example. Write. Likho. Write a letter. <coughs> एक चिट्ठी लिखो राइट मी ए लेटर मुझे एक चिट्ठी लिखो राइट मी ए लेटर बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस मंथ इस महीने के अंत तक मुझे एक चिट्ठी लिखो राइट सो स्टिल द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सेंटेंस इज वेरी सिंपल ओके सो वी कॉल दिस एज 
the simplest words which are simplest sentences in English which is for expressing a request an order or an instruction ok. Let us make the sentences a little more complicated and see these sentences I go what is the meaning of I go? Main jata hoon. Ok. And what is the meaning of this sentence? You go? Tum jate ho. Tum jate ho. Kaun jata hai? That is answered here. Who? In this we had just go. And who was supposed to go? You. Ok. So, whenever you give an order or make a request, you make a request to you, ok, to whomever you are talking, ok. When you give an order, you do not, you, if you are talking to me and you ask me, give me that pen, whether it is an order or a request, in any case, you are talking to the person whom you are talking in the you term, ok. But you do not put that you there, jao. केवल जाओ बोलने से इतना साफ है कि किसको जाने को बोला जा रहा है तुम जाओ बोलना जरूरी नहीं है सो सिमिलरली हियर यू डोंट से यू गो यू माइट से अमंग सेवन पीपल यू यू गो बट बेसिकली द सेंटेंस इज गो ओके हियर द मीनिंग इज नॉट एन ऑर्डर यू गो द मीनिंग इज नॉट एन ऑर्डर इट इज अ स्टेटमेंट ऑफ something which happens, which takes place. For example, I might be talking about you go to school by bus, ok. So, I go, we go, you go, you go. Uh, yes, Kartik, what is this? He goes. Matlab? What? Wo jata hai. Theek hai? Next? She goes. Matlab? Wo jati hai. The sentence structure in English is similar, ok. Unlike Hindi, there is no difference in jata hai and jati hai, both are, both, in both cases it is goes, ok. Ramesh goes, the ant goes, it goes, a boy goes, ok. All of the cases here, in all of the cases here, there is a single person, ok, who goes. So, then in that case we say goes, not go. And when there are more people who go, then we say they go, again go, just like here. In all these cases, we had just go, here also we have go, they go. Ram and Mohan go, two people, so goes. Ram goes, Mohan goes, Ram and Mohan go, fine. Two girls go, cats go. The rule is, the general rule is many go. If there are uh, more than one here, then it is go and for a single person also it will be go not goes in two cases for two most important people one is I and the other is you ok. So, they are like equivalent to many people ok and all the other for all the other people as long as everybody is single anyone else you will use the form goes not go ok. And this is for talking about events which take place in the present. Okay, now it is, um, which is which is a usual thing which happens regularly. Okay, something that happened in past. So in that case, in place of go, it will become went. Okay, and it will be went for all the cases. I went, we went, you went, he went, she went, it went the cat went. Similarly, Tom and Mary went, they went. So, whether there is only one person here or many, in any case, in either case it will be went, same form, ok. And if we talk about, ok, this is wo gaya tha, wo gai thi. Unlike in Hindi, in English went is the same form, ok. And if we talk about event which will take place later, ok for future in some other time that is for example tomorrow or next month okay or next year 
then it will be will go. Okay. So, will is the English verb, English word which signifies future. Okay. I will go, main jaunga. we will go, hum log jayenge. you will go, tum jaoge, ya tum jaogi, ya tum log jaoge. She will go, wah jayegi, Mrs. Sharma will go, Mrs. Sharma jayegi, they will go, we log jayenge, people will go, log jayenge, Theek hai? log jayenge. So, this is the typical structure of the um, verb, this is a typical sentence structure in simple present, simple past and simple future sentences. Okay. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, could we use shall in uh, place of will? That is a beautiful question. In English, the original rule was that with I and we, it is shall which should be used and with you and she, they, people, Mrs. Sharma for all, all of these will should be used. This was the original rule and you should know it. But nowadays uh, for last uh, almost uh, 30 to 50 years, uh, will is being used for I and we also. Okay. So, now nobody uses shall for these. Okay. Still you should know it. Can you tell me why you should know the use of shall? Because now nobody uses, but you may read a book which was written in 1960, which is more than 50 years back. Okay, many good books were written in that time, and that is why you should know that with I and we, shall is to be used. That was the original rule in English grammar. Okay, but now nobody uses, so we are not advocating that you use shall there now will has almost replaced shall. Any other question? If we are not using shall, then why are we using should? That is a good question again and should historically is the past of shall, uh, but its meaning is actually very different, quite independent from shall and uh, the use and meaning of should will come in our course much later, a few weeks down the line it will come properly and then we will see. We will discuss this point again. So, continuing on this will shall discussion, uh, when there was this uh, idea of shall being used against I and we, we used to use will as a you know, forceful. Uh, that is right. So that also goes. When, when the rule was that with I and we, we use shall and for others we will we use will, when that rule was prevalent. At that time, the reverse was used in order to express um, uh, emphasis. I shall go meant my jaunga. I will go meant my jarur jaunga. On the other hand, she will go meant woh jayegi and she shall go meant woh zarur jayegi. And as we have abolished shall, we have abolished that uh, asset, that weapon of putting emphasis. That has been unfortunate, but we cannot help it. Perhaps because of that normal speech and emphatic speech, so much of confusion was caused that people found it safe to use will for every uh, uh, subject. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Sir, uh, on the usage of articles like a boy goes, the hand goes. Uh, uh, yes. We, we are again later having um, uh, one round of discussion in articles and there we will uh, repeat um, this um, stat uh, statement again that uh, in English there is a um, uh, funny uh, rule that singular noun typically goes with uh, an article. So, either a or the or in place of a in some cases an. Okay. In the case of plural um, noun it uh, may not be uh, may not be with an article. For example, cats is fine. So, where you are not um, uh, talking about some cats which are already known, you are talking about cats in general. Okay. So, cats go. So, not the cats. In, the, in this place, if it were the cats, then it would mean that in the background it is known about which cats we are talking. Okay. And similarly here, if about the and 
for about which we are talking if we know that end then it is the end okay we have been already talking about that end on the other hand in this case a boy we don't know which boy we are talking about so if we don't know which boy we are talking about then it is a boy the hindi of it is not necessarily ek larka jata hai it could be larka jata hai if you have to translate larka jata hai then also we have to say a boy goes okay and this is one issue uh, which needs to be stressed because indians make a lot of mistake in this okay and chiti jati hai so here it is known which chiti you are talking about which end you are talking about that is known that is why it is the end goes okay so that is a basic idea what is so sentences the previous one simplest ones these one uh, these yeah why these are simplest sentences why do we call them simplest sentences right uh, as long as you know the idea of these sentences and what do they mean and in what context to use such sentences it is not necessary to keep in mind that some day i told that they are the simplest sentences okay that is first thing second is that why we call it simplest uh, because in any language and certainly in, certainly in english the in most important thing to learn and practice is the agreement between subject and verb okay and in this context these sentences are simplest in the sense that subject is always known which is you and which is not appearing in this sentence at all okay and in that case first of all the subject is always known always the same which is you and subject is not appearing here so we do not have the headache we do not have the trouble of ensuring the agreement between the subject and the verb subject is not coming into the sentence at all and whatever is the subject that is known okay that is you another um uh, difficulty in the learning of the language is the different kinds of sentences jate ho ja rahe ho jata hu ja raha hu jaunga ja chuka okay there is absolutely no difference of that this is simplest in the sense that while giving an order while making a, a request it is only one form in which the verb may come and with only one meaning there is no possibility of different cases so that is why we call it simplest anything else okay so we proceed for um this exercise on this kind of sentences with uh, these word families you know in the previous session we were um supposed to conduct a practice of uh, words in these families according to the plan of the course but uh, then because of lack of time we um did not do that and now we will do a little practice on sentences to be formed in simple present past and future in this pattern okay so in this um round um as i call you and ask you to make some sentences you make sentences only in these um uh, structures okay sentences which express something which happens now it is or which happened sometime in past or which will happen sometime sometime in future so only those sentences we want and simple present simple past simple future okay and here we will pick up words not from the full list but from a shorter list having those words which are very very simple okay ah uh, shashank please come here. write this word hat and uh, make a sentence with this in that format in which we had so many sentences
इज करेक्ट यस ही हैड ए हैड क्या मतलब है इसका उसके पास उसके पास उसके पास एक टोपी है वह टोपी पहनता है उसके पास एक टोपी थी उसके पास एक टोपी थी करेक्ट उसके पास एक टोपी थी वह टोपी पहना था ये सेंटेंस उस फॉर्म में नहीं है जिस फॉर्म में हम चाहते थे ओके ये हो गया पहनता था हाँ मैं चाहता हूँ वह टोपी पहना हुआ था तो कैसे बदलोग ये सेंटेंस सही है ठीक है सेंटेंस सही है मैं चाहता हूँ कि अच्छा ठीक है इसको बदल देते हैं तो मतलब वह टोपी पहनता है ठीक है क्या करेक्शन करना चाहिए इसमें एज को कैपिटल कर दो गुड ही वेयर्स ए हैट नाउ इज फाइन वो टोपी पहनता है और जो जिस टोपी को वो पहनता है वो टोपी अगर पहले से लोगों का देखा हुआ है तब इसमें क्या बदलाव आएगा क्या चेंज आएगा ही वेयर्स द हैट हो जाएगा राइट right? अगर टोपी पहले से परिचित है तो ठीक है इसको मिटा दो हाँ मोहित यू कम ओके राइट द वर्ड फ्लैग एंड मेक ए सेंटेंस विद इट Is this sentence right? She has a flag. And what is the meaning? उसके पास एक झंडा है. ठीक है. उसके पास एक झंडा है. ठीक है. हम लोग झंडे को देखते हैं. देखते हैं. No. What is? Yes. What is? देखते हैं, देखना. देखते हैं. क्या करोगे? What to do? Yes. वह जाता है. वह जाता है. क्या होगा? वह देखता है. ये वही फ्लैग है जिस फ्लैग के बारे में पिछले सेंटेंस में बोला गया है मुझे कैसे पता द लगाया है ठीक है ये वही फ्लैग है ना अच्छा मेरा ओरिजिनल सेंटेंस था हम लोग झंडा देखते हैं बट यू हैव रिटर्न एवरीवन सीज द फ्लैग सेंटेंस इज राइट सेंटेंस इज राइट बट इट इज नॉट द एग्जैक्ट सेंटेंस एग्जैक्ट मीनिंग एग्जैक्ट मीनिंग ऑफ वट आई आस्ट फॉर बट इट रफली मीन्स द सेम थिंग If I want it precise translation, you keep this sentence. But if I want a perfect translation of हम लोग झंडा देखते हैं then what will be the sentence? Write below that. हम लोग झंडा देखते हैं We हम लोग अगर ये वही झंडा है जिसके बारे में पहले बात हो चुकी है तब द आएगा और अगर ये एक नया झंडा है जिसके बारे में पता नहीं तब ए ठीक है वही सी ए फैक्ट और दूसरी बात ये कि हम लोग झंडा देखते हैं और हर बंदा झंडा देखता है ये दोनों सेंटेंस सेम नहीं है इट इज़ पॉसिबल दैट वी सी द फ्लैग बट आवर एनिमीज डोंट ओके 
So everybody sees, everyone sees the flag doesn't mean the same as we see the flag, right? Okay. Next we go to another another word family for continuing our practice on sentences. Yes, um, Akshat. Shirt. Child. Make a sentence in simple past, present or future in which both of these words come. child wears a shirt. Is it, is the sentence right? Yes. Yes. What is the meaning of this? Ek ladka shirt pahanta Ek bachcha. Ek bachcha shirt pahanta hai. Okay. Rub it off. Cut it. Clock. Clock. Make a sentence with this. In simple present, past, or future. Ham log ek ghari khadi denge. We buy a club, full stop. Full stop. We buy a club. Is this sentence right? Mm -hmm. Sentence is right. Just right. Uh, but not what I asked for. Yes. We buy a club. Is ka matlab kya nikla? Ham log ghadi kharidte hain. Tick? Ham log ek ghadi kharidte hain. Agar bolna chahenge, ham log ek ghadi kharidenge, tab kya bolenge? We, we will buy a clock. We will buy a clock. Fine. So, यहाँ पर जो है एक will लगा दिया जाएगा तब. And when you write e, you do not write as like write like this. You write like this. Okay. And when you write o, some of you are writing as like this. This is not the way to write. Okay. The correct turning is. O A. Okay. So it goes up to this point and then turns like this anti clockwise. So the sense of the rotation should be against the clock, opposite to the clock, okay, not like the clock. Okay. This discussion is for teachers. There are um, two issues here. Uh, one is you might have noticed that here in this session and what we have listed here is practice of words of the present families. Okay. So, how a, a set of words is to be practiced for that there is a, a little notes here. So, in the process of practicing of words you can call students in turn to the board, dictate them some of the words in the family and then ask them to make some sentences with those words. And when you are running a practice session with focus on words at that um, situation in that case you typically do not insist on the form of the sentence. Any sentence that the student makes as long as the sentence is right it should be fine because at that time the focus is on words. And after the student 
makes a sentence, you ask the rest of the students in class whether that sentence is right. In that case, ask them the meaning and then ask the student who has made that, made that sentence as whether that is the meaning that he intended and then you settle that issue. On the other hand, if the sentence is not right on the board, then ask the students what will be the correction and then figure out whether that is the meaning that the student making the sentence really wanted to make. Okay? So, this way there will be a lively discussion in class among the students with you and together the students will learn the words better. And make note, remember that in this exercise the focus is to teach the students words. On the other hand, here when we are insisting on the form of the sentence, that is the sentence must be made in simple present, simple past or simple future or some other particular form that we study that we cover in later sessions. When we are insisting on the form of the sentence, at that time it is better to remove the stress of difficult words from the minds of the children and therefore, you can take these short lists of very simple words because now here you take only those words for which the meaning is mostly known among all the children. So, that the pressure of words and meanings is off their mind and they can concentrate on the form of the sentence. And in that case, even if a student has formed a sentence which in itself is right, but not according to uh, the form which you asked for, the form of the sentence which is being taught currently. In that case, you accept that sentence as a correct sentence, but you should also ask him to make a sentence with that same word in the form in which you wanted. This is in order to ensure th that the students get the practice of uh, making sentences in every form whenever that form is being studied in the class. So, when the words are current, you conduct a practice session of these words with focus on words and sentences coming into picture only for usage. On the other hand, when the, the word families are a little old, then you take those old, old fam uh, word families and run the short lists for a practice of syntax rules. There are many similar um, advices, suggestions in these uh, notes files which uh, will help you in conducting your class better. Okay, thank you.